against the Kilkenny half back line. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, um, Tommy Walsh, I mean, certainly is back to his best. You know, Karen Joyce has come in there. He's certainly steadied the ship there. And if Brian Hogan is taken out of that centre position, as George showed in his clip, and he's exposed, certainly Galway have a great chance. Because we've all been talking about Joe Canning maybe already and the star performer he is, but it hasn't been all about Joe Canning this year with Galway. David Burke, Niall Burke, Cyril Donlan, these guys have contributed big time on the scoreboard and that is the important thing up to now you were expecting the, co the Joe Cannons to get the 112, 113 or 212 in a match to pull Galway out of the fair these guys now have contributed on the scoreboard it's a new experience for a lot of these guys first all Ireland final and it's a massive massive undertaking because the build up and the hype and the tension and the nerves like it's, it comes down to 70 minutes and these guys know 70 minutes will go very, very quickly. Yeah. So you have to grasp that opportunity. And I think if they can get a hold on that half-back line and turn them like they did in the Leinster final, they're in with a great shout. You know, when you come to Nile Island and you're an inexperienced team, you haven't been here before, you're mm. playing an inexperienced team. One thing that, in my uh, estimation, is totally underrated mm. is on-field leaders. You know, mm -hmm. Brian Cody yes. has said there, yes. yeah. I've handed it over to the players now. Yes. And everybody's talking about what does the manager yeah. do? It's the on field leaders, the leaders you have in the dressing room, the leaders you have out in the field. We know Kilkenny have okay. numerous leaders all over the field. The big question now have Galway got those leaders? Like Fergal Moore, mm. David Collins, uh, Damien Hayes in the middle of the field. Joe, because now he's a leader of that team. Mm -hmm. Are they going to stand up there today? And are they going to put the whole occasion aside? Are they going to have a totally clear mind? And are they going to drive on the lads around them? Because that to me, if I was to list what was the most important thing in making the breakthrough in big games, I would put that as number one, a way above tactics, formations, or anything else. And in fairness to him, Sheedy, a game that's not referred to too often with Galway uh, this summer is the semi-final against Cork, because it was tight at the end of that game, and it was one of those occasions where Galway did show leaders because they made sure they won the game, where in other days they might have let it slip. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the match was in the belting pot. You know, I mean, yeah. Cork got the first score after half time to go a pint up. And like, they limited Cork to five points for the rest of the second half. So, I mean, their, their defence was mean on that occasion. And, you know, you've seen uh, Conor Lehan solo and through and Fergal Moore came across and just took the ball off his hurley. Man ball and all. Johnny Cohen came out and pushed um, mm -hmm. one of their players to, to yeah. decide. So, yeah. you know, clearly these boys mean business. OK, lads. Uh, well, the President of Ireland, Michael D. Higgins, and his wife, Sabine, are here at Pro Park today for this very special occasion. And uh, the President, of course, accompanied by the President of the GEA, Liam O'Neill, and also his wife, Anya. So President Michael D. Higgins about to meet today's finalists, accompanied by Ulteron Commonwealth Class Coyle, Liam O'Neill, and uh, appropriately President Higgins coming to his first final as Ulteron the Hedden on a day when his native county is in the action and he's going down there first of all to meet the defending champions and the captain Owen Larkin will be introducing his colleagues former hurler of the year of course Owen as his teammates bid to become the first Kilkenny team to win the title after an earlier loss in the provincial championship they were foiled of course in 2004 when Cork beat them in the final and remember today this wonderful team is going for six McCarthy Cups in seven years that's Brian Hogan there that's the new player Kieran Joyce first final for him Michael Fenley, hurler of the year last year, alongside Richie Hogan. Then Henry Shefflin, hoping to win nine All-Ireland medals today on the field, his ninth today. Colin Fenley, his brother, Richie Power, of course, there. And finally, Aidan Taggy Fogarty, as he is known. Wonderful player. Wonderful setting as well, always at Croke Park, and the pitch in immaculate condition. Great credit to the ground staff here. The referee is Barry Kelly from St. Oliver Blankets in Mullingar. His linesman are James McGrath, also Westmead, Dermot Kerwin, and there Johnny Ryan, the silent official. And then the umpires are Michael Coyle, Seamus O'Brien, Noel Nugent, and Paddy Walsh. Big, big day for all of these men as well. And now Galway and the captain Fergal Moore about to introduce his colleagues to President Higgins. Our two most recent presidents also had the pleasure of greeting their fellow county men in All-Ireland Finals while in office. 
Well, there was no Mayo luck or win for President Robertson back in the 90s. Our President McAleese suffered a similar fate in 2010. Although she's from Belfast with her Ross Trevor connections, she was probably rooting for down that year. And will the pattern change in 2012 for President Higgins and for these Galway players, Cyril Donlan there, Damien Hayes, Big Joe Canning, six foot two inches tall, and then finally James Regan, who gets the nod to start today, and a big, huge occasion for each and every one of them. So the introductions are now complete. The dignitaries can watch the drama unfold, because from now until close to five o'clock, the real stars are those down in the park wearing black and amber and maroon and white. The 124th All-Ireland Hurling Final is now just moments away. It is, Ger, and the question is who will be heading up that uh, Hogan stand to claim the Liam McCarthy Cup? That's all going to be decided between now and about 5 o'clock here at Croke Park. The teams will get into the parade in just a moment, so before all that happens, we're going to get the final thoughts from our panel here in studio. Uh, Liam Sheedy, predict the winner of the 2012 All-Ireland Hurling Final. Yeah, I think Galway have done extremely well all year. I mean, Anthony Cunningham in his first year, um, is, is, it's a massive achievement to get them in here. I think it'll be a, the biggest achievement of all if he manages to win it. But just the fact that they're playing in, the, in the, their first final, there's a lot goes on. Um, and I just think Kilkenny, they have, the, they have the level of experience. They've been here before. They're hurting after the Leinster final. Kilkenny by a few points for me. Talking to Damien Hayes last week, and he was saying that he's been saying to some of the younger lads on the panel, don't think that this is just a, a foothold to maybe something in the future. This could be it for the rest of your career. And that's very, very important. Damien's great. He's a very good lad around players, very, very solid lad. And you look at Galway, like, look at the desire, the work rate, the skill. They're going to be all that there today, as well as they have the confidence. I've, I've already beaten Kilkenny in the Leinster final. Now, I'd look at Kilkenny. Champions are always finding new ways to win. Look at Kilkenny. What, what is their big motivation today? Michael Rice, to make up for that, get him a medal after that bit terrible injury in the semi-final. Henry Shefflin, to win the ninth medal on the ninth of the ninth. And above all, even above that, the desire for revenge, which will have been drilled into by Brian Cody, whatever he says on camera. So when Kilkenny are in that mood, they are almost irresistible. And if, if Galway can beat that Kilkenny team, they are really, really super and really arrived. But I'd have to stay with Kilkenny. I believe so that's they're going to two votes for Kilkenny so far. Tomorrow you can't sway it now, but... No, I can't sway it, I suppose, realistically. And look, I, I said to the start of the year that Kilkenny would win the Salerns, right? So I, I'm, I'm not going to change now. Be honest with you, right? when I look at it and I say to Galway, get the start like they did against, against them in the Leinster final. Get Kilkenny to chase the game. But I think Cody will have learned so much from, from, that, from that Leinster final. And look, they have this habit. We saw last year in the all Ireland final, getting Henry Shefflin on the so-called worst defender in any team. And when, within 15 minutes of the match, he had four points scored. Expect to see the team today. Cody will look at three and six, maybe, as weaknesses for Galway, and he will try and get their best players in around that position. To me, I think Kilkenny will win. All right, lads, thanks for that. Great occasion then here at Croke Park. Fabulous atmosphere. It's the All Ireland Harding final of 2012. It is the meeting of Galway and Kilkenny with the decider for the first time since 1993. So then it's time for us to hand over to the commentary box to rejoin Michael Dignan and first, Chair Canning. Thanks Michael, it certainly is a terrific setting. Back in July when these teams last met, Croke Park was only about a quarter full. But look at it now, and you won't find too many spaces in today's crowd of over 80,000 people. It's uh, hard to beat the atmosphere of a hurling final. It's a match which has received lavish advance billing. Being the first time, of course, since 2008 that it's not Kilkenny versus Tipperary. I guess hurling fans probably welcome a change as Galway become Kilkenny's seventh different final opponents in the Brian Cody era, stretching back some 14 years. We're all familiar with the Cats doing two in a row or three in a row or even four in a row, but not everyone under 30 can remember the last time Galway were the All-Ireland champions. 24 years ago, the Olympics were about to be staged in Seoul. Ray Houghton had already put the ball in the back of the English net. Who framed Roger Rabbit was in the cinemas. Enya was top of the charts. And a pint of stout would have cost you the equivalent of 180. It was 1988. Can Galway do it today? It's a big ask, Michael. It's a big ask, but, you know, I think they'll have to take confidence from the Leinster final. They were superb that day. It was no fluke. You know, people say Kilkenny maybe took them for granted. They weren't ready. But Galway produced a fantastic display. And you go back to 2010 when Kilkenny were beaten by Tipperary, it was pace, it was power, 
it was orchestrated game plan that day by Liam Sheedy that where they moved the Kilkenny backs all over the place and took them on and that's what they're going to be trying to do today and if there is any chink in Kilkenny they're on the road a long time you know some of their players it's not so much that they're very old but they have huge mileage on the clock and if Galway can stay in this game early on that's the big concern I have I think Kilkenny will go looking for goals early on and if Galway you know I think it'll have to be a little bit negative early drop someone maybe an extra man back around the back line and try to keep it tight early stay in the game as long as they can and then try to you know use their maybe youth and pace and fitness later on in the game but look it is a big ask this is a great Kilkenny team we all know that uh, you know nine all Ireland finals now they're going for in the last 12 years Brian Cody and Henry Sheffield the two key men have been I think this is their 60 61st game and neither of them has missed Brian Henry Sheffield has started every single championship game since Brian Cody took over in 1999 that's a phenomenal record so they have all the men men out in the field it's all about you know new players coming through and I'm looking forward as usual every other fan who is the man that's going to do it you know we, it's nearly always someone that you don't expect that pops up to be the match winner but it'll take a huge effort from Galway there's no doubt and you know I'm hoping it's going to be a close game of cracker and that uh, you know let the best team win as they say Galway have won the toss they will play from left to right in the first half defending the goal down at Hill 16 and a perfect afternoon the sun is trying to break through the clouds the decibel level rises the whole time there's a great sense of the expectation here hearts are beating a little faster there is that kind of gladiatorial feeling about Croke Park Galway have known for weeks that if they were to win the All-Ireland they would have to beat Kilkenny twice but the champions would be hell-bent on retaining their title please stand for a moment as a mark of respect for Tomás Murphy Chairperson of the Before GAs we get underway, the there is a, a moment's silence, a minute silence for Tomás Murphy, the chairperson of the GEA Child Welfare and Protection Appeals Committee, and uh, Tommy Kelly as well, Galway All Ireland team of 1955 and 1958. And now after that minute silence, everyone facing the tricolour and the Artane band will play our national anthem, our own Avian. <laughs> 